The boss is getting the band back together. In our world of turmoil, that may well be the best news of the year. My review of Letter to You by Bruce Springsteen is coming up next on Track by Track. Hey everybody, my name is Kyle and this is Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. Thanks for tuning in today, and if this is your first time here, please take a second to click subscribe so that you won't miss future reviews and more. Now before we dig into the album, I want to let you know that if you stick around after the review, you can see a short unboxing of the new CD. If you're still a physical music buyer, you may want to look inside the packaging to help you decide if you want to add a copy of Letter to You to your music shelf. If you do, you can find Amazon links to both the CD and vinyl editions in the description below. Needless to say, 2020 has not turned out to be the year any of us expected. Any of us, including Bruce Springsteen. Almost a year ago, following the completion of his Western Stars studio album, the boss found himself in songwriting mode again. What he had in mind was new music with the E Street Band, something he hadn't done since 2014. In an effort to make this music even more the product of a band, Bruce didn't even record demos. Instead, he brought the E Street Band to his home studio in November 2019, taught them the songs one at a time, and over the course of four days, they fleshed out the music and recorded the new album almost entirely live in the studio. Ever the road warrior, Springsteen had intended to take this new music on tour. After all, it was practically built for it, and so many of the songs on the new album simply begged to fill stadiums. But, of course, COVID hit, and live music became one of the great casualties of 2020. And before anyone thinks I'm minimizing the hundreds of thousands of lives lost by lamenting not being able to go to concerts, I want to reinforce the larger impact of this on the live music industry. Thousands of live music venues across the country and around the world have been shuttered for months, many of which may never open again. Without even getting sick, the livelihoods of tens of thousands of workers supporting live music have been all but erased, from ticket takers to security guards to techs to board operators to bartenders to the bands themselves. So again, 2020 has been a dark year in every imaginable way, which is why any glimmer of light from our musical heroes is such a welcome reprieve. Back in September, Springsteen's announcement of the new album and song, Letter to You, was even more than a glimmer. It was like a bolt of lightning. Man, did we need this. I mean, we could joke about Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band showing up like a wrecking ball to save 2020 as if a new album could fix everything like magic, but those are pretty high hopes. Still, we all need something to lift our spirits after the relentless beatdown we've endured this year. And new Springsteen feels like just the ticket. And as I was thinking about Springsteen in the context of 2020, it occurred to me how timing is everything. Last year's Western Stars was a brilliant album that I ended up ranking the best of 2019. But had that album been released a year later, I don't think it would have resonated as strongly. Not even close. As refreshing as that album's sound was in 2019, it would simply not have been the right vibe for 2020. Letter to You, on the other hand, is exactly what this year needed, arriving at the exact right time. Not that it was planned that way, of course. When Bruce wrote these songs, dealing with subjects of mortality and loss, he had no idea what kind of world he'd be releasing them into. There's a bit of irony there, really. If we didn't know any better, we'd think this album was actually partially inspired by today's pandemic-stricken world. But of course, the catalyst for much of this music came two years earlier, with the death of George Thies, a former bandmate in one of Springsteen's earliest bands, the Castiles, and a figure that had a profound and lifelong influence on Bruce. Thies is memorialized most directly on the song Ghosts, which was one of the first singles from the album. Perhaps memorialized isn't the best choice of words, because this is far from a somber affair. Rather, it's a celebration of the way those ghosts still inspire us today. And while the sentiment of the song is plainly earnest, I can't help but feel the lyrics and vocal delivery are a little cumbersome. That's even more clear when you listen to what I'd say is the track's companion song, Last Man Standing. Although Ghosts seems focused on the death of George Theus in specific, Last Man Standing feels more profound, as Springsteen expresses the heavy weight of mortality he feels, because with the passing of Thies, he is now the last living member of the Castiles. 
I actually think this song serves as a much more powerful tribute. And speaking of tributes, it's worth noting this is the first album with the E Street Band without any contribution from the dearly departed Clarence Clemens. The big man's nephew, Jake Clemens, does a fine job filling those legendary shoes, though, delivering a solid sax solo on Last Man Standing. His uncle would be proud. At least you think the entire album is about death and mortality, though it should be said that that's really only the predominant theme of four of the 12 songs, two of which bookend the album. One Minute You're Here seems like a strange choice for an album opener. The song is quietly haunting in a similar fashion to I'm on Fire, and it does a good job setting up the recurring theme of loss. Bruce has described its placement at track one as being sort of a prelude, and when I think about it in that context, it works much better for me. Still, the lyrics suffer from an ailment that resurfaces on a number of these new songs, and that's an over-reliance on cliché phrases and lyrical tropes. One minute you're here, next minute you're gone is far from an original turn of phrase, and certainly too flimsy for a legendary wordsmith like Springsteen to build a classic song upon. The same can be said of the album's coda. I'll See You In My Dreams is the most threadbare title on the album. It's also the most by-the-numbers song on the record from a musical perspective, which unfortunately makes it the weakest and most forgettable track in the song cycle, far from being a strong finish. But in between the prelude and the coda, there are more than a few truly shining moments. Of the newer compositions, the two standout tracks for me are Burn and Train and Rainmaker. Coming in at track three, Burn and Train is where, for me, this album truly kicks into high gear. The opening is absolutely gloriously epic, and if they don't open their eventual concerts with this song, it's simply a crime. There's so much passion and rock and roll abandon here that I'm truly surprised that this wasn't the lead single. Then later on the album comes Rainmaker, a song that feels like the most ferocious track on the album without fully crossing the line. When you consider all that is happening in American culture right now, and this album dropping just weeks ahead of a presidential election, it's a bit surprising how little politics are on display in the lyrics. Rainmaker may or may not be a reference to President Trump, depending on how you want to interpret it. With lines like, Sometimes folks need to believe in something so bad they'll hire a rainmaker, many might read it as a reference to Trump's base. Springsteen has been openly critical of the president in interviews, so while I believe that's definitely his intent here, I will say that his lyrical critique isn't as pointed as I might have expected. The song bears a strong resemblance to tracks from The Rising, but where that album felt so clearly anchored to the tragedy that inspired it, I don't necessarily feel like Rainmaker fully goes there, so to speak. That may please some of the shut up and sing contingent of his fans, who may be more accepting of Bruce towing the line than leaping right over it. Either way, I love the growl in his voice on the chorus, which helps make this perhaps his best vocal on the album, and certainly one of the highlights. I mentioned newer compositions a moment ago, which is an important distinction, because as you probably heard, three of the songs on this new album are actually nearly 50 years old. Springsteen wrote the songs back in 1972 during the creation of the Greetings from Asbury Park album, but never committed them to an album release until now. For me, these are actually three more of the album's highlights. And more than anything, I can hear the strong influence Bob Dylan had on Bruce in his earliest days as a songwriter. If I Was the Priest is a perfect example. This is not just old school Bruce, it's old school Bob, strongly channeling Tangled Up in Blue in both the lyrics and the musical construction. I really love the chord changes coming out of the chorus, and the guitar solo that fades out at the end is terrific. I just wish it was longer which gives us something to look forward to in concert someday. On the other hand, the similarly Dylan-esque Song for Orphans feels like it wears out its welcome by the time it reaches the fifth verse. It's a glorious piece of music, make no mistake, but perhaps a little goes a long way. All three resurrected songs clock in over six minutes, so your mileage may vary. Of those three songs, though, Janie Needs a Shooter is arguably the best. Again, the Dylan influence is unmistakable in the lyrics, the music, and even the harmonica solo. But I also really like the way the guitar channels a bit of Rolling Stones here, giving the song an edge rarely found on any Dylan recording. There's also a simple but sublime perfection in the closing line of the chorus. Bruce sings, Janie needs a shooter now, a shooter man who knows her style. And it could have stopped right there, but adding the way that I know her style 
just nails it. And he brings it home at the conclusion of the song, just wailing on that lyric. Great, great stuff. Thinking about that Dylan influence, it's interesting to contrast those songs from 50 years ago to the ones he wrote in 2019. Even the title track, Letter to You, still holds remnants of that. In the documentary film that accompanies this album release, Springsteen tells how when Dylan heard his first album, he remarked that Bruce should be careful not to use up all the words in the English language on his debut. With Letter to You's opening lyric, Springsteen is clearly still packing in as many words as possible. Neath the crowd of mongrel trees I pulled that bothersome thread. That right there is a mouthful for any musical icon. Somewhere around the middle of the song cycle, things seem to drag down a bit, with a pair of seemingly spiritually themed songs, neither of which feels like they're fully baked. The Power of Prayer is a bit of an odd song that begs to be misinterpreted by the religious faction. It's no more about God than Born in the USA is about patriotism, but at least it isn't a diatribe about faith either, so whatever. Still, it suffers from following the same lyrically rhythmic cadence of the superior Last Man Standing one track earlier, and sees the band members echoing each other's melodic parts rather than exploring the possibilities. House of a Thousand Guitars is similarly pedestrian. The chord structure is blandly repetitive, as are the lyrics themselves, and although the song features what may be the most barbed Trump critique on the album, calling the man a criminal clown, he doesn't really sell the conviction of the lyrics. Following that reference, he sings, May the truth ring out from every small town bar. My reaction was, yeah, I don't think bands playing small town bars are singing anti-Trump anthems. But neither really is Bruce. While we can break down Letter to You track by track and talk about the highs and lows, and there are certainly more highs than lows, the truth of the matter is that as a listening experience in its entirety, this album certainly adds up to more than the sum of its parts. When the title track was released as a single back in early September, by itself I found the song satisfying but somewhat lacking. Now within the complete song cycle it feels like it delivers much more contributing to the whole than it did on its own. And I'd say that for most of the songs on the album. The weaker moments are bolstered by the stronger tracks that surround them, and the strongest of those tracks feel even more elevated together. All that being said, I can't help but feel like the album could have been something more. As a creative endeavor, I appreciate the challenge Bruce took on to record the whole album in just four days. In the documentary, Steve Van Zandt describes them being on a Beatles schedule in the studio, recording a song in three hours and then moving on to the next. Realistically speaking, only a band as brilliant as the Beatles or the E Street Band could possibly pull that off. And on Letter to You, they more than pull it off. But at the same time, nearly all the songs feel like they could have benefited from more time in rehearsal. By committing to such a rushed recording process, I don't think Bruce or the band got to live with any of these songs long enough to truly break them in. There's moments when things feel perfectly executed and simultaneously perfectly mechanical. The band feels tight, but not loose. And if anything, it makes me look forward to hearing these songs truly come alive when the band finally gets to take them on the road. So I'm giving Letter to You by Bruce Springsteen an X rating of 7 out of 10. It's easily one of the best albums of 2020, absolutely the album we needed in this moment, but not necessarily one of the best of the boss's ridiculously impressive discography. All right, as promised, here's a quick unboxing of Letter to You by Bruce Springsteen, the new album featuring the E Street Band. Here's the unwrapped front cover and the spine and the back cover. Here's a look inside the gatefold. This is the CD itself. And finally, we have the 18-page CD booklet. Here's pages 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, 7 and 8, 9 and 10, 11 and 12, 13 and 14, 15 and 16, 17 and 18 and the back of the booklet. 
So there you go, Letter to You by Bruce Springsteen. If you want to add the CD or the vinyl edition to your collection, be sure to look for Amazon order links in the description below. Once again, my name is Kyle, and this has been Track by Track. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Plus, check out some of these other videos below that I think you might also enjoy. And of course, be sure to click subscribe, because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.